every one such morning that God is available unto us. to look into somebody's face, shake the hands of the person, and tell the person, it's a good morning. As I see a position in God. This morning, the word that of God that comes to mind is that portion of scripture that says, ye are God. I see God's in this auditorium this morning. God has endowed you with power. God has endowed you with strength. God has endowed you with might. And it is a solution to somebody's problem this morning. You cannot stand where you are. Move, move, hug somebody, impart power onto somebody. Let's sing.
Asasi Una Our God is good. Hallelujah. As I said earlier this morning, uh, things may not go the way they go every day. There could be change any time. And this morning is such an occasion where there is change. Hallelujah. Please, if you came to church with your Bible, can you please raise your Bible for me to see? Your Bible. Your Bible. I see. Oh, even if it is electronic, you, <laughs> you can show it. <laughs> How many of us came with notepads and pens, something to write in? If you can show that one too. All right. Some will still use the electronic device. So as they write, they read. All right. This morning, I want you to sit well because we are receiving the word of God right away. A very important session of the church service this morning. And the speaker is our own overseer, Prince Nidodu Ofe. Let's welcome him as he comes to speak to us this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? We are grateful to you, Lord, for the gift of grace. And we thank you for the opportunity to be alive today. Pray that, Lord, you speak your word unto us. At the end, Jesus will be glorified. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I have... Often stood here as an evangelist declaring the salvation message to the unsaved and to declare the word of salvation to the church. But this morning I'm doing something different. I am here apostolically. Try as much as possible to settle these controversies and arguments. Praise God. Try to do my best to release some biblical expositions on the tight issue. And to maybe try to settle the minds that are troubled about the arguments. And I want to begin from the spiritual principle. Say spiritual principle. You see, any time you see tithing as a law, you have a difficulty in pain. Because human beings by our nature, we are always in a way trying to stand against laws. So when God says don't eat, man wants to eat. When the law says don't go, man wants to try. See, if you go, me quite then crown the basic. So you are always trying to deal with the law. So anytime you see tithing as a law, you want to try why the law, and you have a difficulty in paying tithe. So I want to begin from the spiritual principle. And I'm saying that the basic spiritual principle in tithing is to recognize that it is He. Say it is He. Let me hear you say it is He. In Genesis chapter 15. God told Abraham that your descendants will go into a strange land for 400 years. And after the 400 years, I will come and take them from there and bring them to the land of Canaan. And when they are coming, they will come with the riches in that land. That's how I'm going to bless them. So you know the story. Joseph was sold into Egypt and he has to go there. His father and his brothers went there. So all the people in Canaan moved to Egypt, and they stayed there for 430 years. And when they were coming, God blessed them. And so, when they were coming, they were disobedient to God in the wilderness. So we are told that God killed all of them except two who came to the promised land. 
Then took note. And so, after their parents have died, you know, the children who were born in the wilderness, they were not there when God gave the laws and the commandments and the promises. So, Moses in the book of Deuteronomy tried to rehearse again to the children of Israel, those who were born in the wilderness, what their God told their fathers in Egypt and in the wilderness. Hallelujah. So, if you read Deuteronomy carefully, Moses re-echoed what God has said to them. And if you get to chapter 8, he used the word remember several times. Say, remember. So, if you read Deuteronomy chapter 8, you realize that Moses said, remember, 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 remember. Because if you don't remember, you forget. And so, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 8, he told them that, Thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to make wealth. Moses was trying to tell them that anytime you forget that it is God who gives you, you will offend what God has said. Anytime you forget that the ability to get what you get is from God, you will forget that it is God who gives it. So he says, remember, tell somebody, remember. So the spiritual principle of tithe is to recognize that it is God who gives. The grace, the life, the strength, the knowledge, the connection to get worth, it is he who gives. As I was reading this night, the Lord told me that some people established Indomie joints. The next day it collapsed. But some people's own are there. Why is yours still there? Say it is he. Yes. This week I met one of my playmates. I grew up in Tamanu Town and we used to play spa and draft and football together. And I saw him come to two. He was mad. And when I saw him, I stopped saying, hey, Ofori. Then the Lord told me, why are you not like him? It is he. So the principle of that is to recognize that your ability to be alive, to get employment, to do business, to make income, it is God who gives the ability. Moses said, Remember. So, the principle of that is simple. To recognize that God gave it. And he says, give me. And once you recognize it is he, you will give back. So, we are told, you know, the, the, the Titan law came in the book of Leviticus. But before then, in Genesis chapter 14, we are told about Abraham. Abraham went to war. And when he was victorious and he was coming, he met Melchizedek, the high priest. And the Bible says that after Melchizedek has blessed him and given him bread, the Bible says that he paid a tenth of all the, what he has received from the victory to Melchizedek. That is tithe. So, before God brought the law, the principle of tithe existed. Spiritual principle that Abraham recognized that to go to war and be victorious, it is God. Hallelujah. So, for you to drive from Tema to Accra every day and go and come to work, there are people who drive and go, they don't come back, they end up in the mortuary. But you go and you keep coming, you go and you keep coming. The reason is, you must know that it is he. So Moses said, remember. Then in, in the book of Genesis, still in chapter 28, verse 20 to 22, we are told about Jacob. You know, after he has had his issue with his brother and he was running away, he got to a place and he saw angels ascending and descending on a ladder. And he prayed and told God, God, if you take me out and you bring me in successfully, I will pay a tenth of all that you bless me. Why? Because he recognized that to go and come back, it is he. So, tithe is not about a law. It's about recognition that it is God who gives the ability to get what we get. If you forget, you'll get into trouble. Hallelujah. So, after the principle, then came the law. So, the law of that thing is just simply that one tenth of all their interest, and he said that it is a wage of one employed, the profit from operation of a business, the increase of one who produces or grows, or the income from any biblically acceptable source. And that word must be underlined. Biblically acceptable source. If you do cocaine and you bring tithe, it's not acceptable. 
So God says that you know when they came from from Egypt and entering the land, God shared the land to the people. And when he got to the level, he told them that I won't give you the land because you are I'm your portion. So he told the other tribes that when you work and you make profit, give a tenth of what you get to the Levites and the priests. Praise God. Let's read that from Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. Leviticus 27, verse 30. I'm reading from the NIV. He says that a tithe of everything, say everything. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belong to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. This is the law. So, whatever you get as an income, the Bible says that a tenth of that by law is it's a, it's holy to the Lord. Not to the pastor or to the church. To the Lord first. Praise God. And that's the principle that the law we are trying to talk about. Then God gave the location for the tithe. When he gave the law, he gave where the tithe should go. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22 to 24, God clearly states where they should send the tithe. Hallelujah. And he talks about the storehouse. And we, we, we've been reading Malachi chapter 3 oftenly. And he says that bring ye all the tithe to the storehouse. Say storehouse. Bring the tithe to the storehouse. So God has legally, by law and Bible, Showed where the tithe must go. The storehouse. So, any teaching that teaches you that give your tithe to the strangers on the street. Some say, when I'm coming to church and I see a blind man on the street, I can give my tithe to them. God didn't say give it to the blind. He said give, bring it to the storehouse. Say storehouse. Some say that oh, you can take your tithe to the children's home, to the orphanage. Now, when you do that, what you have done is a sacrifice. And look at the difference. God says, take it to the storehouse. But you chose to take it to an orphanage. You have given a sacrifice. And the Bible says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Are you getting me? So, you may have given a sacrifice. But that sacrifice is not acceptable to God because you have not been obedient to his word. And you read, we read in Genesis chapter 4 when Cain and Abel gave their offering. The Bible says, and God accepted Abel and his offering. But Cain and his offering, he rejected. Why? He must accept you before your offering. So God said, bring it to the storehouse. If you take it anywhere, all you have done is disobedience. But you have given a sacrifice which God doesn't accept. Say storehouse. Then he showed the purpose for the tithe. You see, when God is doing something, he doesn't rush. He makes sure you get it so that you have no excuse. He gave the principle. He gave the law. He gave where it should go. And he gave the purpose. And he says that that there must be meat in the house. There must be food in the house. So the reason why he said we should pay is to make sure that there's food in the house. And those of us who have been in church for a long time, you know, that in those days in the villages, and I think it's still around, if you are looking for a mission house, it is almost always close to a church. Are you aware? Because... God gave instruction to the Levites and the priests, the pastors, what they should use the tithe for. And you see, in the wisdom of God, he doesn't make mistakes. He says we should give it to them, the storehouse. And he directed the storehouse how to use it. If they fail to use it the way God has instructed, they are disobeying God, and God will deal with them, not us, because we have done our part. 
So he said that, that there may be food in my house. And in those days, and like I'm talking about the mission house, God says that the tithe should be used to take care of the pastors, the poor, the stranger, and the widows. And that instruction is for the church. So you pay the tithe to the church, and the church is supposed to use it to take care of these people, the pastors, the poor, the vulnerable, the stranger, and the widows. If they fail to do that, God holds them responsible. Are you with me? And I will tell you, in this house, it is done. No questions. Hallelujah. And so, when you are a stranger, you travel to any town, and it's late in the night, and you don't have any place to sleep, the first question you ask, where is a church? Because once you see a church, you see a mission house. And when you go to the mission house, you get food to eat, you get a place to sleep, because you're a stranger. Bible says it must be done. So I tell my wife, in the mission house, you don't cook food to, for those who are in the house. You cook extra food. So anybody who comes will get food to eat. That's what the Bible describes. So you know, in the apostolic church, those days, our mothers and the women's movement, they make sure always, every week, they send food staff to the mission house. It is not because the pastors want to eat, because there must be food there, so that when a stranger comes, they'll get something to eat. God gave the purpose that send it to the storehouse so that there will be food in the house. And when there's no food in the house, it is the duty of the people who God has called to make sure there's food. Then God talked about the blessing or the curse. You see, the principle of tithing, as I read, is found in Genesis. Then the law is found in Leviticus. Moses rehearsed it in the ears of the children of Israel in Deuteronomy. So they were paying. They were paying and paying and paying. Then at a point in the life of their journey, they started to default, to disobey the titan. Like a number of people in church today are disobeying. I don't think you are part of it. I don't know. The people began to default. They started giving reasons and excuses why they are not paying the tithe. So God sent the prophet Malachi, like I have been sent this morning as an apostolic officer. He sent the prophet Malachi to go and give them a very strong warning, and the reason why what they are doing is dangerous. So follow me to Malachi chapter 3. Prophet Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament. And I'm reading from verse 6. It says, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a man rob God, yet you rob me? But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offering. Please take note, it is in tithes and offering. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Come on, A. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in the house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out to, to so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your cross, and the vines in your field will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Verse 12. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightsome land, says the Lord Almighty. So the prophet came and he told them that the Lord said, I am the Lord, I change. That's why you are not consumed. That is the principle. That if the Lord had changed yesterday, your enemies would have killed you before you get to the right place. If the Lord, it has not been for the Lord who was on your side, 
There are other people like you who have the same qualification. They don't have jobs. Why do you have a job? It is he. It is the Lord who doesn't change. That is why the same sickness that you took paracetamol and went. Somebody had been in the hospital for years. The person died. Why are you alive? It is he. Moses says, remember. Remember that it is the Lord who does not change. That is why you have life. That is why when you open your shop, people come there to buy. It is he. Say it is he. So the prophet tells them, it is because God doesn't change. That is why you get income. If God changed yesterday, you don't have income. You got promotion because it is he. There are people in the office who have planned that you never get a promotion, but you got it because God doesn't change. Say amen to that one. Then he spoke about robbers, Juloy. When I get, I feel like speaking gun because it sounds better. The Lord was telling the Israelites that when you raise your hand and you sing and God looks down, he doesn't see children, he sees robbers. Hey. I pray God doesn't say that about us. Say amen to that one. So, you have raised your hand. Yes, when God looks down to bless you, he doesn't see a child. He sees an arm robber. Kai. You are now mobile. Then he said that we should bring all, say all. all. <laughs> Not some. All. And when I was preparing this, the Lord was teaching me that even you, you have not given all. And I'll tell you. You know, somebody means, you say, Pastor, the last time you preached, you blessed me. Take 100 cities to buy fuel. Then I moved to the filling station and I buy fuel 100 cities. Not recognizing that it is he. Are you here? The Lord was teaching me that when I was preparing this message. Because the person said, go and buy fuel. But you should know that it is because the Lord has not. That's why you got 100 cities to buy fuel. There are other people who have parked their cars and walking. Say, it is he. Then he says that, then he will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out blessing. After you have recognized, it is he. Then he says that, he will rebook the devourer for your sake. And it looks to me like there are a lot of people who have opened the devourer for their sake. Because you have refused to be obedient in paying the tithe. What God has done is that the devourer has come. He must rebuke him. But you have held the hands of God by not paying your tithe. So God is there. You are calling him. But he cannot act. No, not that he cannot. He will not act because when he acts, he has disobeyed his word. And the Bible says he does not do anything outside the word. Are you here with me? Say it is he. He said that he will rebuke the devourer. There are some of us, immediately money comes to you, pay. Kojo is sick. They will go to the hospital. They will do about seven laps. By the time they finish the scan and the things, scan the head, scan the waist, scan the x-ray. By the time they finish, your money is gone. Say, Deborah. And there are some people, because it is the company who pays the hospital bills, they don't see that it's the Deborah that is eating. So, you go to the hospital, your children go, and the company pays. So you don't feel that it is your money. But if that money was there, they could have added it to your bonus. So he says that if you pay faithfully, then I will rebuke the devourer. There are people who are planning against your promotion. God will rebuke them. That's what the Bible is talking about. In other words, if you fail to do what God has asked you to do, you are releasing the devourer over your life. May God have mercy. I say, may the Lord have mercy. Then it says that, then you will be a delightsome land. Means that things that people don't get, when you get there, you get. Those that are close against when you get there, it will be open because you have become a delightsome land. Say yes, the Lord. Umpe we are. I think the Lord deserves a hand this morning. Now, 
One of the arguments of those who are bringing the controversy against tithe is that the New Testament believer is not supposed to pay tithe. And so they say, oh, Jesus, when he was here, he didn't talk about tithe. Jesus didn't say that this is how we should pay tithe. Why are you collecting tithe? And this morning, let's do some biblical exposition, Matthew 23, 23. And let's settle that case once and for all. Matthew 23, 23. He says, what do you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, and this is Jesus speaking. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, faithfulness, full stop. Then he comes to say, you should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. This English, even me, the technical student, I think I understand. And this night, I was watching one Nigerian guy who is an advocate against tithe. And I'm told, I'm told he holds master's degree in something. I said, ah, Mikra, Mitibrofu, HNO. Jesus said that you practice what Bible has said that you pay your tithe faithfully. But you have neglected other important things that are also very important. Justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Then he goes on to say, and look, there's a full stop. Then he comes to say, if Jesus has stopped there, then those people have a good argument. Then he says that you should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. And your brother simple. So, what is the former? The former is the tithe, and the latter is justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Jesus said that you should practice both. Say both. Did he teach about tithe or not? So their argument has no basis. Then, when you hit them with this scripture, then they come and say, okay, if Jesus taught it, Paul didn't teach about it to the churches. That one, it gets me angry small. They said, Jesus, okay, if you say Jesus taught about it, Paul didn't write it to the churches. And I said, ah, it is like the president of Ghana has given instruction that tomorrow morning, every Ghanaian should sweep their compound. Then you say that your assemblyman didn't tell you, so you won't do it. You get the difference. The president said everybody should sweep. You say your assemblyman didn't tell you, so you won't do it. Jesus says that we should not neglect the former. We should pay the time. Then you say Paul didn't talk about it, so we shouldn't pay. Between Jesus and Paul, who is the owner of the church? And listen, they don't say Paul said we shouldn't do They say Paul didn't talk about it. Why should we neglect what Jesus said as against what Paul didn't say? What an argument. The Bible says that you should have practiced both the former and the latter. Say amen to that one. Let me also deal with the obligatory. Say obligatory. And when I was doing the orientation for the right hand of flesh, I was telling them. The apostolic tenants number 11 said that the obligatory nature for tithe and offering. And that word obligatory is an old King James word, and you must understand it. It means something that is required by moral, legal, or other rules. It is compulsory. Say compulsory. What it means is that the day you come to stand in front here and the pastor read the tenets of the apostolic church and asked you, do you abide by the tenets and practice of the apostolic church? And yes, you took the man and said, yes, I do. The yes, I do means that I will obey tenant number 11. It means that your failure to adhere to tenant number 11 that you can't be a member of the apostolic church. So you can be here physically, but spiritually you are not part of us because you don't accept our beliefs and practices. How many apostolics do I have? Let me see your hand. Apostolics. Thank you very much. Says that obligatory is something that is binding, has a binding effect. And yeah, they are up now we are your share. It's something that is expected by everyone. Say everyone. 
And he says, bring ye all. Let me hear you say all. Ananias and his wife, Mrs. Safira. In the event where people were selling their lands and bringing the money to the apostles to bless the church. They also went to sell their land. Their own land. And when they were bringing their money, they took part and brought part. And Peter asked them, Is this all? They said, It is all. Say all. So let me tell you. Anytime you take an envelope and you call it tight envelope and you put money in, what you are telling God is that, you more fair, fair. All. Say all. When you are putting it in, you are putting the money in the envelope to close it. What you are telling God is that it is all. So Peter said, ah, but why have you decided to lie to the Holy Spirit? Bam, he died. It should never happen to us. Then the wife came. Peter asked the same question. Is it all? She said, it's all. She said the people who took her husband to go and bury, they are still coming. By the time they got there, she also died. The word is that it must be all. So, some people are very conscious. Salary, they pay. Bonus, no. See, the salary is very formal. It comes, bam. So, when it comes, no, you know that salary is no. But the bonus, no. What you are doing is some, not all. Because you must recognize that the bonus, there are other people who work in the year, they didn't receive bonus. You are receiving bonus. You must recognize that it is he. Say amen to that one. So, what it means by all is that any amount that comes to you as a blessing and it belongs to you, there's a tight on it. Because you recognize that it is God who brought it. Now, let me deal with why we write and others don't write. Those writing issue. In the Apostolic Church, I brought a tight bag. Yes. Everywhere in the Apostolic Church, they have this tight bag. Say tight bag. Yes. So, once you become a member, you are given a code number and it's written on it. So, your name is there, Cynthia Chiamane Achro District. So, you have a number. And when you are coming to church, you have your membership card that has your tight payment in it, like this. I'm telling you what happens in the Apostolic Church. Everywhere. So, your name and your number. And any time you pay tight, you put the tight in this bag. And you put it in the tight offering bowl. Then, they go to the office and they record it against your name. So, anybody who deals with these figures knows how much salary you receive at the end of the month. And what happened in the past is that there were people in that finance committee who were writing because they know the figures that people pay. They know their tight records. So they know that, okay, Papa, well, this month, he got some 10000 because he has paid a tight of 1000 Then they come to your house for loan. And so a lot of people have suffered that danger of people knowing what they receive at the end of their month. And the leadership of the church thinks that When they write, it will help people to be faithful. And it's a good reason because at least it will help you to be paying so that people will know that this man paid this man. When you don't pay, the pastor will call you. So in some places, if you are going to do your wedding, they will ask for your tight card first to check whether you pay or you don't pay. C54, the free. Hallelujah. Now, so the leadership here thinks that let the people be faithful to God, not to men. The reason why the tithe is not written. And so that you, you have been given a chance to be faithful to your God, not to men. So nobody knows what you receive, but God knows. And because of that, others have also taken opportunity of the goodwill of the leadership. So they don't pay because nobody knows whether they are paying or not. This one I say, may the Lord have mercy on all of us. <laughs> now let me talk about Philippian fruit account. And Melchizedek. You see, when God was speaking 
through the prophet Malachi. He said that bring the tithe and offering. Say tithe and offering. So it's two things, not just one. You know, it's like somebody told me when I was in Bible school that when we got independence, Nkrumah stood at the place and shouted freedom. He shouted freedom. So the people heard the freedom. They didn't hear the justice. So there's so much freedom, but no justice. It's like anytime we read the Malachi scripture, we hear tithe. We don't hear offering. But the thing is tithe and offering. Say tithe. And shout offering. offering. Thank you very much. So that anytime you read Malachi, kaif offering. No? And you see, in the Bible, God required the churches, the people, the followers of him to always give an offering for projects. So you remember when the Israelites left Egypt and they were coming in the world on the wilderness, when they were not working, God asked them to raise funds to build a, a, a tabernacle. But God said they should raise funds. You know, David raised funds to, for his son Solomon to come and build the temple. So, fundraising has been part of biblical history and the church throughout the church, life of the church. And those of us who have attended Orthodox Church, we know that every year there's some harvest. Say harvest. Yes, it is fundraising for projects. And so, sometimes we call it appeal or fundraising. You go, there will be a table with a nice cloth on it designed well with chairs behind it, then they will call. At the point in the church, they will call the chairman, supporters, and guests of honors. Then all the rich people will go and sit behind it, and the poor will sit there. So in the church, there's always a split between the rich and the poor. But here in this house, we are saying that we are a family of victorious Christians living together in love. So poor or no poor, we are together. I say we are together. So, let's leave the fundraising thing the way we do it. And do it in a way that everybody will be given. So, somebody gave one city. They gave. Somebody gave hundred cities. Somebody gave ten. All of us, as a family, we gave something. I think it's a good thing. Let's give the leadership a hand of applause. So, we started from Philippian fruit account. Then we came to Eden River. So, there's a form. So, at the beginning of the year... This form is there. You fill two parts. How much you are pledging as your money for offering, I mean fundraising for the year. Then you take part, you give part to the church. Then you pay it monthly. And even that one, we're defaulting. And so, we got to a point where we said, okay, now let's do it simple for everybody. When you pay your tithe, just pay another 10. See, another 10. So, to make it easy, we are trying to build a culture of another thing. So that the way we have gotten the tight, when you hear Malachi, no, you know tight, but you forget offering. Now we are making that way that you hear Malachi, you think about tight and offering. So you don't need a form, you don't need any number. All you need is that you pick an envelope, you write your name behind it, and put it in the Mercedes box. And that is your money for fundraising. Your money for appeal. Your money for church projects. To do all the things that is done. You go to some churches. When you go to church on Sunday, there are about seven offerings. There's Thanksgiving offering. This man's father died last year. They will do an offering. This father, man's auntie made a wedding. They will do an offering. Then when they, they wrap up with Kofi Niyama. Have you heard that one before, Kofi Niyama? So when people are going to church, they have to separate the money. It's about seven different times. It's, it's burdensome. Leadership here said, no, 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 don't let us worry ourselves like that. Just give 10% of what you give as tight as Melchizedek. Then when you have done that, you are finished for that period until you receive another income. When you get another income, you pay another 10%. And that is your money for fundraising. And even that one is being difficult. But this morning, I'm trusting God that we will repent and be baptized in the apostolic. And I want us to pray for, you see, it begins with recognizing that it is he. And I know, the Lord taught me as I was learning to prepare for this, that you have not been fully faithful, both in tithe and Melchizedek. Because when you receive 100 cities for fuel, you should have known that there's 10 cities for Melchizedek, 10 cities for tithe. So you go and buy fuel of 80 cities. That's what it's supposed to be. 
Are you getting me? When you get an income of 100 CD, 20 CD of that amount is not yours. 80 CD is yours. But all the time, you keep spending all because you know you have your salary to pay tight and make it. But we are talking about a culture of another thing. And this morning, I want us to pray for as many people. You want to make a pledge to be faithful to God in tight. Rest your feet and let's pray. Not everybody. You know you have defaulted a number of times. You have defaulted a number of times. And you want to boldly come to God aloud, have mercy. Just rest your feet, let's pray. You want to be faithful. No, don't look at your brother. You don't need to look at anybody. You need to be faithful to God Almighty. That from this morning we'll be faithful. I don't want God to look down and see a robe. I want him to see a child. You, you want to stand. Pastor Nemo, please. Pray for them for me. Can you please? Oh, yeah, me uncle, no quarry for Mammy, Mammy. Oh, what is I Hallelujah. is coming to us so that we will recognize that it is God who blesses so we will walk with him. Can you lift up your right hand with me please? I see a blessed people. I see a glorious people. I see a people coming strong. I see a people who are victorious. I see a people who are financially wealthy. Sato Badakaya. Mila Hadove Sobrahan to Sakalabaya. Ikolova Sobrahan Talibahaya. Ilahazo Sivre Kapaluzente Kaya. 
Imando libratu santa baha diva kabaya. Ito posi kabriha talabaya. E shitu fan sobre hitai. Itali wakai baha tuve si kaba. Mizo wahaliva sobre hikala bahazaya. Let God have his way. Let the Spirit of God minister to you. Shibaha Sava Duhabari Hakaya. We pledge our allegiance to you, O God. Because it is you who gives us the power to get wealth. We ask, Lord, that you forgive us of every error. Anything we have taken from you. We ask that the blood of Jesus Christ will intervene for us. And Lord, we also come with our issues. There are a lot of challenges around us. And this morning we ask that by your mercy, show your power and give us the grace to stay on and to move on. Every business that must come our way, every door that needs to be opened, Lord, let them be open in the name of Jesus. Bless us according to your word. So we may sponsor the project of this house and even beyond. That at the end, your name alone shall receive the glory. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let the child say, Amen. Amen. Can you put your hands together for the Lord?